What is an open secret in your profession that we regular folk don't know or generally aren't allowed to be told about? As a freelance ghostwriter, most of my clients are Russian or Middle Eastern men who publish 5 to 10 ghostwritten romance or erotica books a week under female pen names. They spend 10k a month and double or triple that by flooding the market. At one point one client told me he had 6 of the top 10 Regency romance spots on the paid bestseller list. I am in it, we don't always know why the fix worked and we don't care. The number of times I've put gremlins under cause of problem and or hell if I know under solution and a ticket without anyone ever batting an eye is appalling. I work as a hardware contractor for a fairly large insurance company, which means if someone's desk setup has something broken I replace it and everyone's happy. We had one desk though, that pulled a ship of Theseus on me. I had replaced every part I could and it could no longer be considered the same setup, it still didn't work, but only for the person who sat there regularly, we told her she wasn't allowed to sit there anymore due to solar flares. The sheer magnitude of criminal cases that detectives have that will pretty much never even get looked at, much less investigated due to massive lack of staffing, I hear the solve rate, closed cases, last year for homicides was only approximately 61%. Us, which sure sounds like a passable grade, but that does mean over one stroke three of murders go unsolved. That's a lot of murderers that might be walking around free out there. Makes you think we probably need more people working these cases. Dummy thermostats are pretty common. It basically works like a placebo where people feel more comfortable when they think they have control over the room temperature. It results in way fewer complaints, as are hidden temperature limits. The T-Stat may allow you to turn it up 75F on the display, but hidden in the programming its max set point is 68. Living in us military barracks I can confirm this. Every building I've lived in has fake thermostats. I quickly learned that the heat and cooling was ran on calendars regardless of temperatures, often blasting AC in the winter and heat in the summer. I worked as a retailer manger in the past. A customer's attitude and approach is about 99% of the reason someone would help them solve a problem. Sale ended yesterday, your return is past the date, you want a better price on a clearance item, be a normal kind person and you'll usually get your way. If you start off being shy or demanding then, sorry, I can't help you. It's store policy, 1000% percent this. A customer was asking me all sorts of questions on the phone the other day and I know they weren't the answer she wanted but she laughed it off and was super nice about it. So I told her to email me directly and I'd give her an extra 5% off her next purchase for being so nice and reasonable. If you're rude to me, I will absolutely tow the company line and will not help you. Bartender here, if you're cool I will absolutely bend over backwards to make sure your night goes amazing. That means extra stiff drinks, a makes if you don't like something, faster service, etc. You don't even have to tip that well. Just treat me like a human and maybe have a funny story to make my night go faster. If you're mean to me you get exactly what you ordered and not a ml more. Your dog or cat is much more comfortable when you are there with them during euthanasia. It's really hard when people say, it's too hard for me to be here with him, and leave the room for it. It is one of the hardest things ever, but they need you there with them, they look around for you sometimes. That being said, if we do the euthanasia without you, we always have one staff member whose only job during the procedure is to cuddle and comfort your pet and tell them how much their own loves them, and what a good boy they are. I just realized what my brother means when it's his job to cuddle the dogs at his work. Absolutely breaks my heart knowing he has to do that for them. We don't actually know how general anesthesia works at the molecular level. There are theories but nothing concrete. Also, general anesthesia is quite safe contrary to popular belief. Compared to 30-40 years ago, preventable intraoperative mortality from anesthesia is so rare, it is now considered almost statistically undetectable. If you see 12 different sellers for an item on Amazon, in all likelihood the total number of sellers is probably 3 to 4 all of whom have multiple names selling the same item at different prices. I'm a furniture upholsterer, and the amount of times other professionals just recover the old fabric and filling drives me mental. If you're paying for upholstery, ask for progress photos. Nobody needs all that nasty old fabric hidden underneath and it's not fair to the client as they don't necessarily know any better, nor should they have to. 
most hospitals are actually crazy trusting about who they release dead bodies to when people die. Oftentimes I show up with just a gurney, and someone's name scribbled on a post-it note, and they just let me walk out with somebody's grandma without asking my name or getting ID or anything. The amount of salt and fat in your food, especially at high quality restaurants. We kept a large hotel pan full of clarified butter behind the line. ITDBMT by the end of the night. We know all the websites you are visiting and all the rounds of Minesweeper you are playing while you are at your desk. But as long as you aren't doing anything illegal we don't care. All hotels have had bed bugs at one point or another. High end and low end hotels. What separates the good hotels from the bad ones are how they handle bed bugs once they are discovered. But if you ask the front desk if they have ever had bed bugs, they will typically lie and say no since most people don't understand how bed bug infestations happen. Classical musician lots of us at your local symphony are drugged up on beta blokers when we perform. Propanolol. I could perform it all. That stuff is flat out incredible. It's widely used in any sort of TV radio interview setting as well, and I've used it for job interviews and big presentations. It completely cuts out that tightening in your chest, the shortness of breath, the rush of blood pressure, etc. That can come on in high pressure situations. You know that feeling where you can breathe in deeply, but it never quite feels like you can completely exhale. It pretty much eliminates that. Teacher here. I learned early on in the game that there are a lot of supplies we don't have to pay for if we just know where to look and how to ask nicely. Want to have a lesson about plants? Go to a grocery store florist a few days ahead and ask if they can set aside their dying flowers for your class. Need cardboard? Ask a store for their old boxes. I've even heard of my colleagues just going to stores and asking for donations and explaining why, and getting new stuff for free. It's amazing how much people are willing to go out of their way to help educate kids. I'm not sure if you realize how unintentionally depressing this is. Your secret boils down to if you scavenge on your own time enough, you can afford to educate kids instead of paying out of your own pocket just to do your job. I see the bright side too, that people are willing to help, but it's nuts that you have to go find that help. Most people who work in its support really aren't more tech savvy than the average user. They just know how to Google. I used to work in daycare. I have worked at several. I'm American. The law in Washington state was 14 toddlers to 2 staff, and most dakers try to run at the max amount which provides a terribly stressful environment for children. Even if you enroll your kid in a daycare with less children to teacher ratio, the daycare is usually trying to raise it and a couple less kids being there is temporary. State regulations can be bizarre, and cause even less ratio of care. For example every child must have their diaper changed every 2 hours or more, all day and be documented. Multiply that by 14 kids. So changing all 14 diapers potty training some every 2 hours for 8 minus 10 hour days. The 2 staff rule is really just one person watching the kids for most of the day while the other person is changing diapers. A good environment being provided is almost impossible when one person is watching 14 toddlers. The state taxes takers for breaking any small rule. So they struggle to make money and pay people fairly hire more staff. The same ratio applies in Ohio. It doesn't matter if the clients are mostly well-to-do and private paid or single parents on state assistance every place wants to get away with as many kids to as few teachers as possible. And you can bet as soon as that toddler room drops to 7 kids towards the end of the day, one of you is either going home or going to another room to send someone be home. Breaks are always given at nap times because they can legally have all 14 toddlers in there with one teacher if the kids are on their cots. You're also supposed to do sanitizing and lesson plans at nap times too. Never mind that there's always one kid that doesn't sleep and another one who is shitting their pants or puking. If you buy an antique or a vintage piece it most likely went through five hands, each one at least doubling the price. The majority of regular broadcast radio shows are pre-recorded. If a DJ is broadcasting live, usually the morning shows, they still have no control over what music plays, it's all pre-programmed, they'll usually record phone requests and replay them during the voice break before the requested song is scheduled to play anyway, to make it seem like they're playing taking requests, when the studio is empty, all phone lines are set to busy, so no one calls and realizes there's no one there to answer. 
Vet worker here. Probably doesn't count as a secret but we absolutely do pet your cats and dogs a lot when you bring them in. I once overheard my dog's cardiologist telling him she'd carry him to the back like the prince you are, instead of him walking on his leash, when she was taking him back for a scan. I loved that vet. At the airlines, we generally have no idea where your bag is at any given time. It follows a chain of events to get to the right place. If it ends up missing, no one is looking for your bag. Your file gets loaded in a computer and when your bag is eventually scanned somewhere, a person is notified to grab it before it moves on to somewhere else. This also means, if you jump to an earlier flight, there is a strong chance that your bag is going to fly on the original flight. The time is usually too little to go find it, retag it and get it to a new flight. If you jump to another airline and we have already retagged it handed it off to a different airline, it is done. We are not going to be able to retrieve it. It is flying on that flight. Just because your bag tag shows CLT on it does not mean it was accidentally sent there. We often send bags through multiple cities as it will reunite you and your bag. Hours faster than the next direct flight. Sometimes. We even send it on other airlines that you never even flew on. We may even send it the other way around the globe. X. Lax to the XB. Dubai. You may have flown through London on British Airways. But the fastest way for me to send your bag may be through Seoul, South Korea on Delta and Korean Air. We try our best but it's a question of volume, staffing, time, and technology. When temperamental artists ask us to adjust the sound and we pretend to twiddle knobs. 25 years as both performer and tech, I have seen both the best and worst of both sides. The best was an internationally renowned jazz artist with an incredibly exacting tech rider. He would not enter the venue until his road manager reviewed every piece. The tech director was totally chill about it, and told me he and his fans have certain expectations, and our job is to meet them. When sound check started, the artist was incredibly gracious, thoughtful, respectful, and exacting. An absolute delight in every way, and we didn't stop until it was perfect. Some artists are temperamental pricks. And some engineers are condescending douchebags. I have had my fill of both. The true pros work together to create a great experience. Insurance rep here. Your credit score matters more than people realize. It can affect your auto insurance premium by as much as $100 a month. And if you're a renter, I can pretty much ballpark your credit score by running a renter's insurance quote for you. The higher the monthly premium for your renter's insurance. The steer your credit score. That most of those three people have booked this hotel today or four people are looking at this product at right now pop-ups on travel agency website and e-commerce sites are lies. Totally static and made up. That reinforced glass and that security camera may not actually be unbreakable or being monitored or recorded, respectively. If you can see the monitor showing the camera feed, it doesn't actually mean it's being recorded. Two. These things can just be there to make people guess whether it actually works or not. Go ahead, roll that dice. People typically just go somewhere where there isn't a camera or glass. Instead, 